Hello everyone and welcome back to the TVM crew. Today I'm so happy to have with me again Matthew Schmidt. How are you? I'm good, Mara. Thank you for having me back. I'm so honored. I am so happy. Well, for everyone to know, we've known each other like for years now. I, I don't even know how about much that? time. <laughs> yes. About that. And, <laughs> yes. He's the, uh, the director of the short, The Challenge, which is one of the best shorts I have watched. And we are going to be doing the Hotel Alexandria Challenge. <laughs> it's this super cool challenge that all the kids at our school are doing, but none of them have completed it. And I encourage everyone to go watch it. It's so, so creepy, right? About these teenagers um, doing a challenge, exploring a haunted hotel. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm I'm so glad you like it that much. Uh, I Absolutely. I got to say that it it has been it, it has been much more a, a lot of positive feedback. I'll say that a lot of positive feedback. So. It couldn't be otherwise. <laughs> it couldn't be otherwise. Well, hmm. even the best movie in the world is going to have its detractors. So it is what it is. But yeah, but considering that, I mean, I think that it gives everything that a horror fan wants you know even if there are some things that some people could not like or something like that um right. yeah so i would like to ask you because i'm curious about some things because i have no idea about the process of filming a movie um like how do you choose the perfect actor for your films, because I think that it's not the average kind of actor. Like, um, it's not easy to show fear or to show it's it's especially a difficult. So how 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 do you choose them? Right. Um, well, I mean, like anything, like any other production, we do go through a standard audition mm -hmm. process. Um, mm -hmm. We do work uh, with a casting agency that's near me down here. Um, I say down here, sorry, because I'm south, I'm southern uh, New Jersey, so I always say okay. down here, but yeah, I work with a casting agency local to me, so it always starts with that. Um, besides the standard audition, which mm -hmm. uh, gives you an idea of their skill level, what I really love in an actor or actress is their enthusiasm for okay. the part, hmm. because when when they're enthusiastic... I know that they're going to come in and give it their all. Hmm. And I've been really, really fortunate so far to been able to find those actors and actresses that are really gung ho about the projects. Hmm. Um, you know, like any, like anything else, as you grow as a filmmaker, um, there's mistakes and there's learning, uh, you know, there's um, learning mistakes and it's like, OK, I could have done this better. I could have done that better. Hmm. Um, but I'll take more of that on my shoulders. That's me as a director. I need to learn yeah. to if I'm not getting something out of them, I need to learn to make sure that I'm telling them the adjustments I want them to make correctly hmm. so that they know how to make those adjustments and make the performance better. But so far, I have been really fortunate because um, we've casted well and the enthusiasm level, again, when you when you get that, you feel like you're working with a partner, not just someone you're paying to be there. Yeah, I understand. Because the um, the two girls in the child, they are so young. Like, yes. do, you, do you see a difference between working with a young act, uh, actor or actress and with someone more experienced? Like... They they were both younger, but they both had. Um, I'm not sure if you use this expression over there, old souls. And then all the way down, and you have to record the whole thing, for proof, and it's all like abandoned and like. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um. So they were. Uh, they're both highly intelligent, and they could understand exactly what I was saying. And even though they were new to me working with me, they weren't new to acting. Um, okay. They've been uh, studying acting in their respective schools. Uh, they uh, one of them is already in college for performing, mm -hmm. and the other one is about to be. So um, it's not acting wasn't something acting and performing was not new to them. So in that sense, 
they had old souls in in the sense that they could understand exactly what I was going for in each mm -hmm. scene. Yes, and so what was for them the the biggest challenge when it came to to your film? Um, was difficult for them. I mean, it's it's hard for for me to speak what was difficult for them, but if mm -hmm. I were to guess, well, from your perspective. Right. From my perspective, mm. uh, what I would guess is they maybe came in with a little too much energy. Yeah. Um, and the first time we filmed with that, not the first time, I should correct that. The first time we filmed in the hotel, uh -huh, Okay. The, the opening scene is actually the first night we filmed with them. Uh -huh. And it was pitch perfect. It was exactly what I wanted out of them. Two girls having fun, yeah. getting all amped up for the challenge and stuff. Uh, wish us luck! Woo! Bye! But when we first got the hotel, the first few takes in the hotel, they kept that fun energy up. Yeah. And I said, girls, you got to bring it down. We got to make it more. You're a little more creeped out now. You're not having as much fun anymore. Now you're a little more nervous. You're a little more creeped out. Yeah. So that um, bringing them down off that off that level was uh, was one. And I guess the only other thing is because of the youth factor, um, uh -huh. time and scheduling uh, would, uh. would have been a challenge for them just because, you know, they were both in school, they both had uh -huh. other obligations and we could only film usually up until a certain hour hmm. um, before it got too late for them. <laughs> so. Yeah. How long did it take to film it? Because that I guess that one, made it longer. Right. That one, that particular short took about about three months three months okay yeah with with only being able to work uh basically one night a week hmm. Be oh, i understand and coming back what uh about what you said that they have to lower the energy i i kind of understand because if you think about any other kind of film any genre like drama or even if you're surrounded with people that they are filming you and they are Maybe it's easier to get into into your character because at the end uh, you don't have to pretend to be alone like horror requires, right. right? Because that feeling of like when you're at home, right? You're at home and you suddenly hear a noise and there's that moment that you freeze until you realize what is that? That you need to be alone, right? It's, I, right. I guess it has to be very difficult to do that surrounded by people like you're obviously yes. not alone right so yes. do, do you have to somehow help them to get into that atmosphere i'm i'm thinking they they were pretty good naturally at that yes. I, i'm thinking of the one time where i really really talked to the one actress and if you remember it was the scene after the one girl goes missing and she's yes. alone in the room talking to the camera yeah about yeah yes the try to find her friend and get out <laughs> but uh who knows if we'll run into her or not We're with that scene i really spoke to her uh kind of one-on-one -on -one, and i was like listen i said you know you're alone now you're really afraid um and you're really you're you you like instead of just the stereotypical oh my god i might die <laughs> like freak out yeah i wanted her to be really sad about really what really death would mean and mm -hmm. how she really might not see her family again and stuff like that so i really started to talk to her about memories she had about you know her parents mm -hmm. or her mom cooking her breakfast and stuff like that and it really just like sunk in and got to her so with a situation like that i was really trying to pull emotion out the rest of it with them walking around um even in the shots they were alone i gotta say that i give all the credit to them they were very natural about it yes hmm, i can understand maybe sometimes a single thought can make like change right the the, the whole mindset on it yes at, at the end also i think that one of the things that must be scary in a situation like strange situation like that is the thought of that maybe no one will ever know what happened to you, right? You just go missing, right. and, and it, I think that that would be wow. So, um, and at what you were saying that you didn't want like the stereotypical kind of fear. 
that's something I liked a lot about your film that I, I won't mention it because I don't want to spoil it, but there's one thing like the, the most maybe could say um, like the central one that it um the that part that's out to you. It, yes. The whole thing. So you guys Yeah. So um she um they and they don't react as all the dumb uh teenagers the, in the typical movies that they do the dumb thing like going to right. the basement with a broken flashlight you know yeah. <laughs> alone of course um so uh, that's what i like like it's very real you know like you see something that it's not okay and you don't just run towards death you know right. <laughs> so I, i think that that makes it that, that i think that that's the the what makes it really creepy that okay. yeah. I yes. That. Yes, because yes. even sometimes, you know, like I I live in an old house because it's part of the building of the church. So and the church it's from the maybe maybe it has 700 years. I mean, it's a very old building and my house is physically old. It's okay, but it, the 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 like the style, you know? And with all the horror material that I have in my <laughs> <laughs> Even now, many times I look at the stairs and think, oh, "I'm I'm just going to do something else because I can I can start thinking of that." And your I I think often about your film um, because there's that moment that that I, I like the like there's one of the girls is like more excited like ah this is a joke and the other one is like okay but. Mm, I don't know. This ghost lady who supposedly lived in the house. And she died in the hotel. <laughs> and I like that part of, of her acting. Like, there's a moment where she's in the line of, this is true, this is not true, um, this is just my mind. Um, and I think that that's something very real for any of us that has been maybe not in that situation because I don't go out ha <laughs> exploring haunted hotels, but I do in my, in my own house, you know, like, right. uh, was that a, uh, no, 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 the, you know, the, the, that, that line. So well, it, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's what we all do. Right. So like, we're all like alone sometimes and we'll hear mm -hmm. something or we'll see something out of the corner of our eye mm -hmm. and it'll make us like scared for a minute. But then it's almost like a defense mechanism in every human's mind where we rationalize it and we mm. say, okay, yeah, it could have been something creepy, but it's more than likely just because I saw something out of yes. the shadow or the corner of my eye. And it, it made me, uh, my, especially like people like you and me, our horror minds yes. Yes. built <laughs> in the blanks and make it more than it is. It's just like you're saying with the old church, it's probably a beautiful church. Yes. But because you and I are so like horror educated. Yes, yes. The first thing we see when the when we when we see those old churches is like we start thinking about the exorcist, we start thinking about the omen. Absolutely. We start, you know, it's the religious horrors start to kick in, you know, yes. and it's like you can't help it. But it, so it's like it's great because it's so it's so such a great uh quality to have such a great vivid imagination. Yes, yes. But It, if you don't control it, it can get you. It can uh, get you scared sometimes. Yes, absolutely. It's very easy huh, to fall down the rabbit hole because, yeah. like here, when one of the parts is the church, that it's it's connected to my house. I mean, I can actually access the church. I could get there like at night <laughs> in the middle of the church, you know, which I right. will never do because <laughs> that would be, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't have a team behind me, I'm not getting in there. I have a theater too. I open a door and I see like a part of the chairs. Mm -hmm. that it's all dark and there's all the chairs there. And like, uh, no, 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 no. So when I'm in the second floor, well, maybe the third floor, that is where I live. Um, and I hear a noise. Ah, imagine well, all my thoughts, you know, the church, <laughs> the theater, the, the, all of that. And, and I think that, that your film represents that um very well yeah well i mean if i'm thinking off the top of my head it, it's kind of like um without giving too much away when they see a certain object move 
And then they think to themselves, like one of them gets freaked out and the other's like rationalizes it exactly. and says, no, it could have been this or that or that, you know, let's, let's stay calm, you know? And yeah, I mean, people do that all the time. Um, I remember I went with my friends a few years ago to an abandoned uh, asylum, um, mm -hmm. but the, it's, cool. it's a tour. So it's not, it wasn't really any danger, oh, but okay. Um, you know, we experienced some things and I said, and like, I, I said to my friend after I said, you know what, regardless of whether we experienced or not is real. I said, what was great about the experience for me was that I felt that rush and fear again and excitement again, yeah. So whether it was real or not to me was irrelevant. Did I experience, did I get that fun experience I was looking for? And the answer was yes, I did. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's all how you take it in, you know, but I can still be a cynic and still um, get excited, you know? Yes. Well, actually, actually, there's a lot of people in the horror community don't believe in anything. <laughs> I right. mean, yes. So, and still they enjoy it. Right? right. So, yeah. So it's like two different, two different things that if you believe, then it's even more scary. <laughs> right. Well, here's the thing. I believe. Yeah. Yes. I just, but for me, like it, it, it's like, I believe in the possibilities of a lot of things, mm -hmm. but sometimes I needed to, I needed to get to a point where I can't find an explanation. Yeah. That's what I like, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And you as a director, um, what's your biggest challenge when you're filming? Um, you know, it's so funny. Uh, it, it's, it's by far time. Um, mm -hmm. because I have a full-time job, because I have yeah. a, a very busy, uh, home life because of that, I, it's, it's all time. Mm -hmm. Um, time's my biggest challenge because, and how that bleeds into the actual filming. So it's like, it's, it's hard enough finding time to film. And that's why my current film is taking forever. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, it's hard enough to find time to film, but then even when you film, you're so um you're so trying to cram everything into that one session because you want to get the most out of each session yeah. that things get missed and mistakes get made and then you mm -hmm. go back and you look at the footage you filmed and you're like oh i forgot to do this or i forgot to do that yeah. now i gotta reshoot that shot again mm -hmm. so it's like it's 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 by far and away time um is my biggest challenge mm -hmm. I can understand that that even with the with the challenge, you had the the other problem of the schedule of the girls. So I guess right. it was even even more difficult, right? And the because, more people you involved, of course, the more people you involve in any project, you have to account for every single one of their schedules. Mm. Because how many people um, do you work with for uh, for the challenge? I'm going to try to think for the challenge. If I count every scene, we had mm -hmm. three plus two actors plus, um, plus the other two. So I had five, right? F uh, no, I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five, eight total performers. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, and then uh, on certain days when you had to coordinate everybody's schedule into one, oh my God, it was a nightmare. Yeah. It was a nightmare. Um, so, uh, and then my my crew members, which is usually me and two other people. So, mm -hmm. there you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can so. imagine. Yeah, it's, uh, it, 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 has to be a, it has to be difficult. Yeah, I have problems. When I have to talk to three or four people that I work with, I have to organize a call. Oh, like, oh. It's impossible. <laughs> even the, yes, even more because we all have different time zones. I have one in Australia, one in Ireland, one in the US. It's like, well, yep. okay, <laughs> I'll meet you in my next life. <laughs> so, and how do you choose your location? Um, my locations are at this moment. Mm -hmm. because I, I still feel like a beginner. Yes, I'm working on my third full film now, but I still feel like a beginner. Yeah. So my locations are still based on, um, somewhat based on availability to me. Mm -hmm. So for instance, with the challenge, it is a hotel that is placed above 
um, a location called the Irish Pub. Mm -hmm. I happen to be very friendly with the owner. Awesome. And she said to me, you know, I, I said, I'm in love with that hotel. And, and yeah. when you watch it, you can see why you instantly fall in love with the decor, the setting. Um, it's very okay. much, <laughs> it's very much reminiscent of a shining type yeah. hotel. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just said, I'm absolutely in love with it. She said, well, look, we're, you know, during the off season, um, you know, because they're really only open like, uh, late spring through early fall. She said during the off season, you can have your carp on carp launch of the place and film there. And I said, Oh my God, this is incredible. So, so it's, a, it's a functioning hotel. Yes, it is a functioning hotel. Okay, that's even cooler. Yes. <laughs> it is a functioning hotel. This so would be I, an amazing publicity for them. You know that, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> so I, I was very, very fortunate to be able to um uh to use that location and it's great because it already is somewhat of an of a very famous location they've only closed once in the history of the uh of the bar and that was during prohibition mm. um which was I, I believe the 20s or 30s i can't remember um yeah. but um it's it's absolutely amazing um and you know who who guests bartends there a lot mm -hmm. and guests is uh kelsey grammar uh -huh. so He's there all the time too. Um, and it's just, so in, in when choosing location right now, it is kind of based on availability, mm -hmm. but I also have been um, just exploring. There's a lot of great, just creepy locations in the area, like abandoned yeah. railroad tracks and stuff like that, that I, you know, that I would like to film on again. And um, it, it just, you, my mind's always going. So I, I see something, I'm like, wow, let me just take a picture and remember that for the future in case I can fit that into a future film. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just what location really speaks to you, you know? Um, and this place kind of speaks for, the, the challenge location speaks Whoa, for itself. It's amazing. <laughs> so. Yes, yes. Only the place is creeping off. <laughs> you know? yep. Yes, it's awesome. Yes, actually, there are a lot, that's interesting what you say because sometimes, a location doesn't have to be creepy itself to be creepy like school right. a school at night is terrifying <laughs> you know <laughs> or so or or a hospital or i don't know any place like that that d during the day there's a lot of people when yep. it's empty I, I have always thought i would well if i could avoid it i would never be like the person who cleans the school at night <laughs> Well, it's just like it's just like what we were saying about the church that you're next to. Yes, yes, exactly. It's probably a beautiful place inside, and you can probably see it. But if it's lit correctly, if it's empty, if it has like certain music added to it, yes. it could be extremely creepy. I'm sure. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Well, and music does a lot too, because sometimes there's there's movies that if you remove the the music, then it's it's not how. The, the, oh, the, the jams are the music. <laughs> yes. Well, it's it's actually a very famous example with uh, John Carpenter's Halloween. Yes. He showed a rough cut to a producer in Hollywood who he didn't name, but it was a producer and he didn't have the music yet. And she said, this is not scary. There's nothing scary about this. Well, he showed it to her a couple months later with the music added. And she said, I apologize. I was wrong. This is scary. Mm -hmm. So... But you know what? That's that's one of the disadvantages of the challenge because it's a found footage style um, film. So you really can't add music without there being a, a very specific reason why the music is there. Yeah. Um, now, what I'm shooting now is cinematic, so I can go crazy with music if I want. So mm. it's, it's a different style. But Yes. And can you tell us something about your new one? I can tell you the title. Uh, it is called Mr. Sandman. Okay. And I can tell you basically uh, the primal fear that it's based on. And it's kind of like what you and I were talking about earlier about seeing stuff out of the corner of your eye. Okay. So I'm sure you remember, and I, I'm going to say that every child has experienced this at some point. I'm sure you remember when you were a child, mm -hmm. there must have been an occasion where maybe you fell asleep in the living room with the TV on. Yes. And you woke up and you know, your family had gone to bed already and you mm. were alone. 
Yeah. Now you had that scary journey of getting from the living room or TV room yeah, yeah, yeah. all the way to the safety of your bedroom. And that was- Back to the it, wall. <laughs> yes. And you're running from room to room, turning on lights yeah. here, turning off lights, running yeah. from room to room to get to your bedroom. That's the idea it started with. But instead of just the child's imagination of trying to get to that room, yeah. what if there was actually a real threat there? Yeah. A real wow. monster and not just the child's imagination. Yeah. And that's what Mr. Sandman is based on. That oh, idea. That's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny how these experiences get stuck in, in our minds. And I'm, I'm sure everyone can relate to that. <laughs> right. Yes, like my, my, my mother, with all her good intention, he told me, because we lived in a house once. It was very old. And it was full of ghosts. I was sure of it. I, 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 I still, I am still, I'm certain of it. Um, the, the bathroom was in the first floor and the bedrooms were in the second. So there was no way I was going down <laughs> in the middle of the night, but sometimes I needed to. And I was terrified. And I, I woke up my mom every time, come with me to the bathroom. When she got fed up of me, she told me, you just sing, sing. And the fear will go away. Like a bit like the sound of music kind of, you know, right which is very poetic and all of that. But I tried and I realized how terrifying that is because I was hearing myself in the silence of the house. Wow. Singing. With like, an echo? Was there an echo? Yes, too? yes. It oh, was God. one of these high ceilings. High ceiling. and, oh, it was terrifying because suddenly I realized that I was waking up the monsters, you know, like, hey, I'm here, <laughs> <laughs> come for me. And I, I run up, like I didn't realize, like my mom said, you just sing, let me sleep, you know, said, okay. And I went out, I started singing, but I wasn't scared. So my, my thing was like very creepy actually, right? And I, now as an adult, I think how these little things can add up to. Right right to, to the creepiness of, of a situation i mean i terrified myself which is it's ridiculous right <laughs> well no but you're absolutely right it's true you want to be dead silent because you feel like if you make a noise then that's going to alert whatever's there to your presence and come get you and it's so true exactly exactly it's like running when you run it's way more terrifying uh, because it seems that first you're making noise so you cannot hear if there's something behind you running. And right. then I have always thought that it's not only the fact that you cannot look back when you're running because of the motion. Yeah. I think that it's also because of animals. Like if you have a dog in front of you that is about to jump on you and there's this, this tension moment that who moves first, if you run, he's going to jump on you. So it's like yeah. this animal instinct of... Yeah not moving when you have something around you right i think right. that horror plays a lot with that yeah absolutely because you it's it's what's known as like frozen in fear mm -hmm. you know you're just you're frozen because you don't know how to react you're like do i run do i stay still do i you know and it's 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 the best way to grab uh, to um to play on when you're when you're trying to create something of horror mm -hmm. what's primal what scares people from just their instincts um you know that's why jaws was so effective mm -hmm. it's a primal fear to be eaten yeah. or bit and it's from way back in the caveman days in our dna that we can't even you know mm -hmm. like it's just it's something you can't avoid it is a primal fear yeah the, actually now you made me think that about this that's this uh, prank that i think they were made in brazil but um, i think it's like um that there's this hotel like this big fancy hotel that they have these big elevators and they make the the prank to people that the when they are going up or down in the elevator the the, the lights flick and a, mm -hmm. and a girl like um i've seen those prank videos yes. i know what you're talking about the little girl in the white dress like you know, yes. yes and the first thing i thought how dangerous that is for the girl because yes. you never know like now you made me think of that the primal response i always yep. thought I, I would never put my kid in there because you never know maybe right. someone reacts 
like kicking it. Yeah. 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 So I, I found it because people really was scared because they, they want to get out of the elevator. So yeah. some some people really think it's a threat. Yeah, those those uh, those reality pranks, can, a yeah. few of them, I know a few of them have gone wrong. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a dangerous situation. But yes, it is. It's exactly what happens. Your primal instinct kicks in your your mm. what you know, what's uh, what's known as your fight or flight instinct. Yeah. Kicks. Mm -hmm. um and it definitely can make you react without you even uh knowing mm -hmm. that you're reacting that way yes yes exactly so this i, I have always found this prank so so dangerous like they they it make this and that they get into like a parking lot like a that is underground parking lot yep. and they find like someone killing someone else you yep. know I, and they start all. yes and they start chasing them I thought, oof, um, I mean, what, okay. Like, like what, what if is, someone pulls out a gun or something? You know, exactly, you don't know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Or what if the person that gets there has a heart problem or something? That's true yeah. too. Yeah. So I, I always thought, I don't know to what point that, you know, it's, it's dangerous i know it's 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 a it's a it's a dangerous line to walk and yeah. uh i personally wouldn't be involved in it could be for those same reasons that you just yeah. mentioned so yeah um but uh, thankfully in cinema we don't have to worry about that you know what you're going into so it's like you can get as primal and as scary as you want exactly that's the amazing thing about horror that you can always say that's not true you know so yep. yes yep. yes I, I i have always thought about this thing because I know for me, for example, my reaction is always to jump first, <laughs> you know, <Right>. like, <laughs> yes, sometimes that I, that I like with my kid was because we're alone when my kid was um, even younger than she was two or three years. Um, I remember like sometimes hearing a noise or something or like seeing I was once in the kitchen that her bedroom was straight, like you opened her door and you went to the kitchen, one of these strange distribution um and i remember one that uh, maybe it was my mind but like being in the kitchen and seeing clearly a shadow getting into her bedroom like straight getting in and right. i remember entering the bedroom like almost shouting you know like going on top of it and in that moment you don't think that that's no. the thing that that well, what was your right? maternal instincts kicking in exactly yep. your so... protect maternal instincts Yep. Maybe if it was me, if it was in my bedroom, maybe if, <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be the same reaction, right? But, yes. Yeah. So, okay, before we wrap up, where can everyone find you and find your work? Um, well, the challenge is, is free to watch on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, because, uh, and I, I can't remember if we discussed this last time, but it was originally part of a full feature film. Mm -hmm. um, which was called Tales of Found Footage, and it was the first story, awesome. and it was by far the most popular story. Mm -hmm. So, but why. that came out, yes, it, it's clearly the best one. Um, and that came out in 2019. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, a friend of mine suggested me, uh, I guess a year and a half ago now, he said, Why don't you just, while you're working on your new thing, why don't you just release, since it's by far the most popular? release it and just let everybody um, check it out on mm -hmm. its own without the weight of the other two stories holding it down. So I said, okay, I said, good idea. Um, and I threw it out there. And like I said, the, the full film got a very mixed response because people love the first story. And then some of them liked the other stories, some of them didn't, but it was absolutely universal that everybody loved that first story. So uh, it, the, it's it's hashtag the challenge is the title and then but when you type it in on youtube make sure you add in the word horror otherwise you'll get that mtv show the yeah. challenge of yeah. pop up um uh so you can find it there and i uh myself and my company acres films are on mm -hmm. instagram twitter facebook um uh, oh and uh the slasher app acres uh, films yes. slasher app mm -hmm. um so you can find us all there and i as as the new project starts to come out and we get a trailer together i will release them on all the socials 
So, um, yeah, you can you can follow us, follow me and follow us on all those uh, social medias. Awesome. I will link everything so everyone can follow you. And I can't wait to see your new one. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait for it to be finished. (laughs) Yes. Do you know? Do you have a plan of when are you going to release it? I'm hoping to be done filming by the end of April. Oh, okay. And I'm hoping for a release. I'm hoping for a release <laughs> this fall. Okay. But at the same time, I, I promised myself that I wouldn't rush this one. So mm-hmm. if it's not ready, if it's not ready by the fall, then I will wait until after the holidays because people get wrapped up in the holidays and horror yes. is not the thing on their minds. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then give me, give me updated on everything you do. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. You've been you've been such a huge fan and supporter. Absolutely. <laughs> and I appreciate everything. everything. Well, that's your merit. <laughs> I'm just enjoying yeah. your content. <laughs> yes, it's been awesome. You've been amazing. Uh, <laughs> your support has been incredible. Thank you. Mm, thank you. <laughs> okay, then thank you so much for your time again. And I hope to have you again when you release your 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 new yes. one. Okay. I can't wait. I cannot wait to talk about it when it comes out. Okay, perfect. Then <laughs> thank you so much and have a lovely day. You too. You too. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Delaney. And I'm Sarah. And we are going to be doing the Hotel Alexandria Challenge. It's this super cool challenge that all the kids at our school are doing, but none of them have not a single one. Um, uh, the challenge is you have to make it all the way up to the fourth floor and then all the way down and you have to record the whole thing for free. And it's all like abandoned and like haunted. Yes, yes. I mean, like, there's like this ghost lady who supposedly lived in the And she died in the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, who knows if we'll run into her or not. We're yeah. recording the whole thing. So you guys will find out if you stay tuned. Yep. Uh, is that it? Yeah! Uh, wish us luck! <laughs> Woo! Bye!